yes, 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 God will. Thank you, Sister Enrique. Thank you so much for this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful residency. Sister Alicia, thank you. Sister Otilia, thank you. Young Mikhail, thank you very much. Family, good morning all and happy Sabbath. It is indeed good to see you all this morning. For everyone watching online, I'd like to welcome you and say good morning to you. For those who haven't been back to church since COVID, your spirits are being kept warm. We want to see you back home in church. How does the wind blow? Time really flies. It seemed like yes, yesterday the year began. And now we're in June, halfway through the year. But remember, God told us that for the very next day, he shall shorten it. The days shall become shorter. And surely we can see all God's word manifesting before us. God is indeed a wonderful God. He is a loving and caring God, and all his words will come to pass. Heavenly Father, mighty God, I come before you this morning, O oh God, humble. The words which I'm about to speak, O oh God, let them be not my own, but the words that you have impressed upon my heart, O oh God. Heavenly Father, may the Holy Spirit take control right now to lead me and to guide me. Father, bind us together as one, so that every word I speak will be edifying to those who are in the church and those who are online, O oh God. In Jesus' most precious name I pray, amen. Family, my message to you this morning is entitled, Go Tell It to the World. Go Tell It to the World. We have been called upon as the disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ to do just that. That was a great command given to us by our Lord Jesus Christ after his resurrection and before he was ascended back to his heavenly kingdom. As written in Matthew 28, written from verse 16, in which we are told, as the 11 disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All power are given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Teach them to observe all things, whatever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end. And God is with us. He was with us from the beginning, and he'll be with us to the end of time. The message, the message is the same today. It is the same now. And it was the same from the beginning of time. God loves us in spite of all our misgivings and sinful nature. He is not prepared to let us fall and remain in the hands of the evil one. Although men stray from God, I tell you, God will never give up on man. He wants us to come back to him. He wants us to walk away from sin. He shaped us and formed us from the dirt of the earth, breathing his precious breath of life within us. Not that we should die, but that we should live forever. Because of disobedience and sin, all must now sleep. But when we sleep, let it be 
that we sleep in the Lord. So that on that great day, when our Lord Jesus Christ comes burst into the cloud, he will receive us with a wonderful word saying, welcome, my beloved. The Lord has promised us we shall live again. And if we should live again, we shall live again in a place most beautiful, even more beautiful than this beautiful garden that he created for us in the first place. At this moment, Jesus is at the side of his Father making intercession on our behalf. And he knows who, and he knows who would live and who would perish. Family, I want to assure you this morning that God's words and all his promises will come to pass. What he says he will do, he will do. Every word spoken by our Lord Jesus Christ will come to pass. In the years before the flood, God called Noah that he might go forth and speak to the people, giving them the opportunity to repent and walk away from their sinful ways. Noah preached to the people for 120 years, yet they would not listen. Family, God is forever loving. He continues to plead with us, choosing not to give up on men, who in the end always seem to give up on themselves, condemned by their own deeds and action. We are told in Genesis 6, reading from verse 5, God saw that the weakness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. And it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping things, and the fowls of the air, for it repented me that I have made man. Can you imagine? God who put so much care in creating man is now repented by man. For man has become so sinful in his ways. Because of man's disobedience and unwillingness to listen to the voice of Noah, destruction would come to them. We are told that Noah found grace in the eyes of God. And as such, when the floods came, only Noah and his family were found worthy to be saved. 120 years Noah preached. He preached to the people. They had a time of probation to make themselves ready. They did not listen. They continued to walk in their sinful ways. <laughs> Are we the same in this time? As the rain began to fall and the waters rose, many must have called upon the name of God to rescue them. But family, it was too late. They did not listen when they had the time to. Probation had ended and all would perish. Once again, I reaffirm to you this morning that we are responsible for our own actions. And none should blame God when destruction befalls us, for we all have the opportunity to repent. We all have the opportunity to walk away from sin. Abraham pleaded with God on behalf of the people in Sodom. But in the end, only Lot and his family were found worthy to be saved before the city was destroyed. God chose Israel, calling them his chosen people, but having rescued them from slavery, having taken them across the desert, across the Red Sea, through the wilderness, having fed them and clothed them, having done all that he could 
to guide them to the promised land. No, in the promised land, the people will turn against God. The people will turn their backs on God, neglecting all that God had done for them, just as it is in this time. Many have turned their backs on God. You hear them saying proudly, there is no God. My heart pains me when you talk to some people and they tell you, who is God? Should we all know God, not, not know God in this time? In Israel at that time, the prophets, the priests, the leaders of the churches all had fallen away to sin. Rather than teaching others about the only true God, the people chose to worship other gods, gods of wood, stone, the works of the hands. Yet, because of the loving nature of our God, he now called upon the prophet Jeremiah, who he sent forth to speak to the people, to warn them of the judgment which would befall them if they did not come back to him. You see, family, God does not want any one of us to go down to the wheel of sin. He will continue pleading to us. <clears throat> God is almost on his knees talking to us, begging us to give up our sinful ways so that we may be saved. How wonderful is God? How wonderful is that God who created us all? God chose Jeremiah and ordained him a prophet for a time such as this. But the people will reject him, mock him, and throw him into well. They would not listen to him. How many times must God come to us? How patient must God be with us before he turns his back on us? Yet, the nature of God is not to turn his back on us. He will keep on working to bring us back home. The word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah, of Josiah the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the 13th year of his reign. The historical fact is that Josiah ascended the throne, being king over Judah at the age of 18, after the assassination of his father Amon in the year 641. And as such, Jeremiah had been called 13 years into the reign of Josiah, was a day the prophet to the people in the year 654. It is important to know those dates. For this is the assurance to us that everything written in scriptures are historical facts. The Lord spoke to Jeremiah, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nation. Jeremiah seeing the wickedness of the people. Knowing the hearts of the people was reluctant to answer the call. But the Lord would answer him, saying, Say not that I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I have sent thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not be afraid of the faces. I am with thee to deliver thee, said the Lord. You see, family, when God calls us, when he sends us, he will always go before us to prepare the way, to make the way straight. He will place his words in our mouth like he did with Jeremiah. We should not be afraid of what we should speak, for as the Lord put forth his hands, and touch the lips of Jeremiah, so too he will put the words in our mouth. You see, on Thursday I spoke to Elder George. I did not know I'd be preaching today. On Friday morning I received a message from Elder George saying, Elder Baker, you're preaching today. 
I thought, oh no, today is Friday, tomorrow is Sabbath, what will I say? But you see, when we humble ourselves and pray, and we call upon the Lord, he will come to our rescue. And so the Lord has put in my mouth this morning this message that I'm delivering to you. Just as the Lord called Jeremiah to speak to the children of Israel, he's also calling us today, in these last days, that we should also speak to the world, telling them of the Lord's second coming and the judgment which awaits us. The trumpet has sounded. Judgment is at hand. The cry has gone out. Go tell it to the world. Speak the three angel messages. We are heading to the time proclaimed by our Lord Jesus Christ. As foretold in Matthew 25, written from verse 31, which says, When the Son of Man shall come in all his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall speak to them one from an, he, shall, he shall separate them, my apologies, one from another. As a sheep, as a shepherd divided the sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on the right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them, on the right hand, come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you, the foundation of this world, from the foundation of this world. Amen. Beloved, where would you want to be? Do you remember that promise which our Lord Jesus Christ left us with? He said he's going to prepare a place for us. And if he's gone to prepare that place for us, he told us he shall return to take us onto that place. Where would you want to be? Are you so negligent? Are you so foolish and careless with your own life that you will walk away from life and choose death? As John the Baptist came as a forerunner to Jesus' first coming, so too we are called upon to go forth and proclaim to the world his second coming is near. And as Jesus came and walked this earth, teaching us by example what is required of us. So too, his second coming is assured. Yes, Jesus is coming again. He is coming again. Look around us. The signs are everywhere. There's wars and rumors of wars. There's earthquakes. There's famine, pestilence. Children are destroying each other, killing each other at the school gates. Cursing parents having no respect for the elders. These are the signs. These are the signs that the Lord Jesus Christ told us of. He is coming again. Let he who have eyes to, to see, let him see. Let him who have ears to hear, hear that call. Let us not be like those who sold him, abused him, mocked him, and conspired to nail him to that cross. The very one who he came to save, who in the end would betray him. Brethren, I beseech you this morning, take heed and listen to the trumpet call. The signs are now clear to all who have eyes. These are the final days of probation. None of us know the hour. None of us know the time. What we do know, however, is that one day we shall all sleep. And when we sleep, our probation is up. For no man can pray for the dead. No one can ask forgiveness for us once we sleep. We must make ourselves right today. Don't think about tomorrow, because any one of us can walk out of this door today. And when we walk out that door, we do not arrive home. Our time is up. Let us make it right with God now. Let us not hear his voice and walk away and say, tomorrow I'll make it right. Today I'll eat and be merry. And tomorrow I will confess my sins and make it right. 
it might be too late. Remember those who did not listen to Noah? When the floods came, the doors of the ark were shut by the hands of God. It was too late. All those things happened for our edification. It happened so that we will know the time and the days in which we now live. So family, let us make it right with God. Let us make ourselves right and be ready so that when our Lord comes, we will not be found in our same old sinful way. Amen. Brethren, take heed. Listen to the trumpet call as I said. Let us answer the call, feed the poor, close the naked, attend to the sick, visit the shirtings and those in prison. But most importantly, the call is out that we being the disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ in these last days, we are called forth to spread the three angel messages, telling it to the world, to every nation and every people and every town. Let us talk to everyone that we meet. It doesn't matter if they push us aside. It doesn't matter if we're talking nonsense. Let us talk to them. Let them hear the truth from us. God is not telling us that we have the power to make everyone to, to want convert to him. All we have to do is tell them the truth. And when we tell them the truth, if they would listen, the Holy Spirit will take control and bring them to all righteousness. Just so that we could have no doubt about the beauty of what our Lord Jesus Christ told us that he has gone to prepare. John was given a glimpse into the heavenly kingdom. He was shown the splendor and beauty of that glorious place, that heavenly place where our Lord now sits. Jesus, the only one found worthy to open the Lamb's book of life. John, we are told, was on the eyes of Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. When overtaken by the Holy Spirit on the Lord's day, he heard a great voice as a trumpet saying, I am the Alpha and the Amigo, the first and the last. John was given a message for the seven churches, together with a message including the three angel messages which must be preached to all the earth before our Lord returning. This is the very same message which was from the beginning, preached to mankind from the beginning of time, through the ancient of days, and on to this time. Given unto Abraham, and unto Noah, and unto Moses, and unto John the Baptist, and unto Isaiah and Jeremiah, and then proclaimed by our Lord Jesus Christ. Speaking of God's love for mankind, his redemptive spirit, and the judgment which is to come. Now being children of the promise, descendants of Abraham, we are called upon to spread this very same message of salvation throughout all the world. Telling of, of the soon coming and the final judgment, John writes, I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice from heaven, for God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment have come and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters and they followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. That great city, because she made all nations drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. 
And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hands, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out with mixtures into, a, into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone. The presence of the holy angel and the presence of the lamb. Family, these are the words given to the angel to give to us. Those are the same words our Lord is asking us to take to the nations of the world so that they may repent and walk away from their sins. Why? Because we serve a gracious God. A God who do not want anyone to fall to the ways of sin. If God can bring the whole world onto him, believe me, everyone will be saved. But when we are condemned, it is not because God condemned us. It is because by our own ways, deeds, and actions, we have condemned ourselves. Family, the message is clear. We are now in the final days before our Lord returning. These are the days of probation. Let us call the world to repentance so as many who would take it and listen to us should be saved. Let us go into the world. Tell of our Lord's soon coming and the judgment which is at hand. Saints of God, are we ready and willing to answer that call? I ask you again, are we ready and willing to answer that call? Are we worthy to be called children of the light and descendants of Abraham? For when God chose, when God chose Israel, he did not say the Lord be good. God chose Israel, but the people rejected God. And so when God made a promise unto Abraham, saying that your seed shall be more than the sand on the seashores and more than the, sand, the stars in heaven, he was not talking to just one nation. He was talking to us, all of us who, are now, who can now be called the children of Abraham. If so, if we believe in the promise, if we are willing to take up the mantle and follow God, if we are willing to do what God has asked us to do, if we consider ourselves children of the Most High, descendants of Abraham, if we are willing to say, Lord, take us and save us, if we are willing to call upon his name, repent our sins, and take up his cross and follow him, then, family, I want to ask you, please stand with me. Stand with me, my family. And for those of you who might feel committed to coming up front, please come up front and ask Elder George to come forward and pray for us. Please come forward. Elder George, can you please pray for the saints for me, please? Come forward, Elder. Please come forward, people. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. The Lord is calling us. He's speaking to our hearts. Come forward. Let us pray. Elder. As we come to make a commitment to God's word and his message, uh, I think this message is timely in the days that we live. And I think it is important as a church we understand why we are here and why God is raised up for such a time as this. So as we come up to the front, we want to pray that you make a commitment in your heart, not only to this movement, but to the message that God has given us. Let us pray. Our loving and gracious Father, we want to thank you once again for this wonderful afternoon you've given us. We want to thank you, Lord, for placing us in such a time as this. Throughout history, as the preacher said, God has always had a people and a message to give. And we want to thank you for placing us in such a time when the world is changing, events are happening so quickly, we cannot catch up. So many things are happening. But yet in this time, 
when there is so much confusion, there is a clear word that is calling upon people to commit to thee. We want to thank you for the message you've heard. You've given us a commission to tell the world and to prepare them for the second coming of Christ. Paul once said, how can they know unless somebody has been sent? And how can they hear unless a preacher has been sent? So to this end, God, you have raised us a group of people who are faithful to your calling, and you've given us this commission to share to the world. And Lord, as we stand for a commitment to this message, we pray that you may be faithful unto the end. Bless those people that are here, those that are watching, that today may be a day where we say we are changing our paths. Today we are going to commit ourselves. Whatever we do in deed and in word and in thought, it must be pointing towards you. Once again, we thank you for being in the land of the living. We do know that each day you give us is a special day because, Lord, we know many people you know, greater than us, people who are more righteous than us who are not on this planet. But you've given us a day to live. We pray that you may use this time and use it well. Once again, we thank you for this time you've given us. We thank you for this message, and we thank you for placing us at such a time as this. In your wonderful name we pray. Amen.